Now we're gonna go ahead and make this look a little bit better using Bootstrap. <music> Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of front-end libraries out there, which is why I waited so long to implement one. When I say a front-end library, I mean just something that makes it look better. This used to be called a front-end framework. It is certainly not considered a front-end framework anymore. It's really just a library or toolkit that you might use to make the CSS look better, right? To just give some overall uh, a better aesthetic for your application. So go ahead and jump in to Bootstrap itself and go over to the docs and you can scroll down to the starter template if you haven't done this already. So what we want, really want here is the Bootstrap CSS and the Bootstrap bundle, right? There's other options for it and we can add in required meta tags as well. Um, so we can always just copy this and bring it over into our templates into base.html. And yeah, some of this you might already have, some of you won't necessarily. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the required meta tags and then the Bootstrap CSS. And I'm gonna put the Bootstrap CSS above the HTMX stuff because this is my custom styles here. Next, of course, is I'm gonna just bring in the JavaScript towards the bottom. Now we could put it above our event listener here just to be on the safe side of when we want Bootstrap to actually load. So after we do that, our page already looks different, right? Now, part of the reason that our form looks different is because of the classes that I purposefully implemented, right? Uh, so now we just want to make this look even better. And overall, it's fairly straightforward on how this is done. First of all, we no longer need this hello world. We certainly do not need the link to the CSS any longer. Now we've got something more like this, right? So going into the bootstrap documentation is really gonna help you with a lot of these things. And so another thing that's gonna help you is by just going into their examples. They have plenty and I have tutorials covering bootstrap. The newer version is not really that much different, uh, but the general idea is you wanna actually use their docs as much as possible and when in doubt, just you know go ahead and inspect any given element and work off of that. But the first thing I wanna do is add a nav bar. So the nav bar itself is going to just be include, and I'm gonna call it base and nav bar.html. Okay, and I want this on every single page, of course. And so in this case, I actually don't have anything for the nav bar yet. So let's go ahead and do base and create a new file and call it nav bar, not navy bar. I'll go ahead and change that in base. Okay, so this is meant to be our navigation bar. And again, we go into the bootstrap documentation and we're just gonna go ahead and go into the components here, scroll down to nav bar, scroll down, look for a nav bar. Here's one. Let's go ahead and copy that, paste it in here, save it, and let's go back to our page. Hey, it's looking better already. Okay, so not that big of a deal as far as the navigation is concerned. Uh, but one of the things that's cool is this form right here. We did have a search form. Remember that? Well, we can actually put that in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in, just like that. Paste it in, there's our search form, right? It's duplicated, but it's there. I'm gonna get rid of this old one. I'm actually gonna cut out this old one and go in to that search form, right? So search and search dash form, okay? So here it is, right? We've got a lot of stuff going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in and just take a look at some of the items I might wanna use, like this class of deflex, okay? Again, you might not know what that is, just put it in. And then the input class right here, form control. And our input text, here's our input. And again, form control. And then we have the button here. I can actually replace our button that we had. And let's get rid of that. Refresh. Hey, what do you know? A much better looking search. Now the dropdown doesn't look great, uh, but this also means that in base.html, I definitely wanna get rid of that include tag. It's no longer there. And so I can actually search, you know, type ahead. Now this isn't great, right? Because we have this type ad feature that's nice and all, but I actually 
uh, it doesn't show me a whole lot uh, in terms of uh, articles in my case, um, but it does give me these tacos. I can actually do the things that I've been wanting to do with a drop down. Uh, now, I can absolutely improve that later. That's certainly something I want to do, uh, but it's not something I'm going to do yet. I do want to change the actual nav bar. One more thing about it, the search form that is, is coming into the select item here and adding in class form dash control as well and taking a look at what happens there. Now we've got a little bit better look. In this case, I'm actually going to leave the recipe as the primary selected one. So I'll just go ahead and come in here and do selected. And there we go. Okay, so now I can search those recipes and we can actually search tacos again. And what do I know? I got tacos. Granted, got to be logged in for all that. So let's change this search bar to being, you know, if request.user is authenticated, that's when we'll show the search bar. So we just make sure that that user is authenticated. Otherwise, that's what they'll see, something like that. Cool. So the next thing, of course, is the main content area and how we want to approach this. This is going to give us an insight into some of the general idea of how Bootstrap works. So we're going to go ahead and do div class equals to container. Okay. So this is the primary container that's going to be around things. Now you can use the class of container or container fluid. Both of these will be very telling for us. After you do that, we declare a class of row, and then we're going to go ahead and declare a class of column. Don't you worry, I'm going to explain each one of these things. And we're going to put it around our replacing block of block content. And so if we now look at our content and refresh, it starts to bring our data in a little bit, right? So if I zoom out a little bit, it's going to be a little easier to see what's going on, um, at least on my screen. And so if I open this up and close it down, I've got something going on. So this column here is actually how a row is broken up. If you think of a row as like an Excel spreadsheet, each row has up to 12 columns. And so we can actually use all 12 of those columns. By default, if you just put column without a number, that's exactly what it's gonna do is use all of those columns. If you decide that you want it to be one column, you could do that. And by default, it will only be one column. And this is gonna be very clear when we break it down and look at one single column inside of an, a mobile application, right? Or what the mobile version would look like. It is really, really hard to read. So instead, what you're gonna to wanna to do is open it up, right? It's probably gonna be 12. And then that's how it actually goes the full length, right? So let's say, for instance, you only wanted it half length. Column six, that's half. There you go. And so when I break it down, it's always going down to six, right? So it's always at half. So no matter how big the browser is, that's how big it's gonna look. So there's another thing called breakpoints that if I wanted to break at some point to change how it's structured, I can do that. So this time, everything under a medium size, which is what that MD stands for, it will break down to 12. So medium, uh, right now it's small, it's under medium, it's under medium. Eventually it becomes over medium, over this size of medium, passing that breakpoint, then it turns into six. Pretty cool. So it's not that practical for where we are. Let's actually start implementing it fairly practically. We want to keep that container in. And now I'm actually going to go to that edit the actual editing of that recipe. So let's create update view. And so now what we want is I want to have my ingredient form on one side and my edit, my actual ingredients themselves on the other side, okay? So to do this, we put divs around everything that we want to separate and tab this in and tab this in. And so if I put a class here of column and a class here of column, 
And then up here, I'm gonna go ahead and give a class of row. I'll see them automatically separate. Okay, but as I get smaller, I start seeing this problem. That does not look great. Until I get really small, then it actually does make a difference. So again, wanting to make it very explicit, we can say maybe at column medium, I want it to be eight across. And like I said, every row has up to 12 columns. So that would mean this would be maybe four. So eight plus four is 12. And so now at a medium breakpoint, it turns this into eight across and this into four across. And I can break it down and hey, what do you know? But the problem is, is when it gets small, it's still having that issue. So then I just do column dash 12 and I explicitly say what it should be when it's smaller and there we go. And again, I mean, if I wanted it to be, when it's really small, I want it to be column two, I could do that. I can make it smaller. It doesn't actually matter. It's completely up to me. But it's actually pretty nice that Bootstrap gives me these things out of the gates, right? Just makes it a little bit easier to, I mean, make things look better, <laughs> right? And it's everything else still works. All the functionality is still there. But now the user isn't going to be like, what is going on? Why is all of this text here? And now I can add a new description, you know, save it to all the things that I've been doing. And that's it. But you might be wondering, why is this floating? Why is there like gap here? Why isn't it all the way over like the navigation bar? That has to do with this container. So if it did container or container fluid, it's going to change how it's rendered out. It looks the same when it's small, but when it's big, it looks quite a bit different, which gives you a lot more real estate to work with. So you're going to play around with that as much as you want. Of course, if you go into the nav bar itself, notice that container fluid is in there. If we change that to container, now it brings everything in, although there still is that color separation. Uh, but everything's lined up as it should be, which I think is really nice and really useful. Okay, so now going forward, we'll continue to improve the Bootstrap related things. Yes, you can absolutely learn a lot more about Bootstrap, but this one little change has already made our site look better. Just very simple. We have a navigation bar now, and we have the ability to use all sorts of things. Now, when I say it's going to come around as we build this more. Let's say, for instance, I always want to have some sort of padding underneath my navigation bar. So in that case, I wanted to make a separation, All right? So let's go to the home page. Notice that it's really close to the navigation bar. Maybe I want some padding below that or some margin below that. There's a couple of ways on how I could go about doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in the nav bar itself and I'm going to use MB standing for margin bottom being five. This is the biggest margin I can have. So it's from one to five, one, two, three, four, five. Refresh in there, five gives me that. Two gives me that. And zero gives me that, right? So if I do something like three, I've got a margin of three now. And so that when I go to pantry into any given recipe or all the recipes, I will still have that margin. So I no longer need stuff like margin top of 30 pixels anywhere, right? I should use the actual bootstrap classes going forward so I can actually see everything that's going on with just the general look of the site and all. And so something with the ingredients, this is a good example of where actual Django could come in when we go to create this. Okay, so how we can use Django to modify what's being rendered and how it's being rendered. So in the case of ingredients, the only time I'll be able to add ingredients as it stands right now is if our object actually exists. So in this case, what I would do is I would say if object.id, then I'll go ahead and put those in. Maybe all of those classes, right? Just like that. And the same is basically true down here as well. Make sure you have quotes around all of it. We could also put an else clause in here. So else, uh, well, actually that one won't need an else clause, but this one will. Then I'll say column MD six, 
put it right in the middle. And actually the else clause that I need in here, I just realized should be else and the class of d-none. Okay, let me break this down a little bit. Save that and refresh. Now that ingredient div is completely gone because there's no object ID. But of course, if I go into one of my recipes and hit edit, um, we actually see that div is coming through, which is great. But if I add a new one, maybe I don't want my recipes way over here. Maybe instead I want them in the middle. So what I can do is I can actually do the margin itself as to how it's offset. So we can actually say MX as in the X, both sides of this, the front and the back of it. But if I do MX auto, refresh in here, boom, now it goes in the middle. And then we could go one step even further than that and say above this form, this of course is not necessarily bootstrap related anymore, but we can say if not object ID, we can say create recipe and there we go. Right, so another one, hit save. Now we've got another one, we hit edit. What do you know? I can extract those images. I can do all of the things that I've been expecting. So Bootstrap itself is very useful. Bootstrap with Django, I think adds some additional usefulness to Bootstrap itself. The final, probably most useful thing that you would probably want to use is Bootstrap with JavaScript. And there's things that you can do in Bootstrap that you can't necessarily do without JavaScript. Um, a good example of this would be like a carousel. So if we come in here, there's actually a way for this to rotate. So that's built into Bootstrap and they give really good, easy examples on stuff like that. Carousels are certainly not the only thing. Another one would be like a modal. So if you've never seen a modal before, it looks like this, right? That is all driven through JavaScript, something I'm not really gonna be handling at this point. If everyone wants to see it later, let me know. Uh, but that's it for Bootstrap at this point. We will definitely be adding to it as we go forward.